Hey guys, now regular harmonica is totally great, but if you want to sound just a little bit more powerful and be able to keep up with a band, then you're definitely going to want to get an amplified harmonica setup. So you will need a microphone, an amplifier, and maybe a pedal board so you can get a sound like this. There's a ton of options here. So in this video, I'm going to help you sort through them and give you some tips on buying an amplifier. And in the next two videos in this mini series, I'm gonna talk about microphones and pedals. So let's go get started with amps. The first thing you need to decide is, do you wanna amplify at home? Do you wanna be playing on stage or maybe both? Now for players just concerned with home practice, I suggest that you get a small battery powered solid state practice amp. Now, part of the aesthetic of harmonica is the fact that they're very portable and these are the most portable, okay? They don't even need to be plugged into the wall. They got battery lives that last for months and they still sound pretty good. So I'm talking about amps like the Pignose 700, the Blackstar Fly, Vox DA5, and the Boss Katana Mini. And these work very well because we don't need all of the nuance that like guitar players are looking for when they get an amp. And that's important because we're usually playing guitar gear. Now, the amps that I've mentioned are all pretty decent, but they're pretty low wattage. Now, they can get relatively loud, but, you know, nothing compared to, like, a large tube amp. So they're for to a totally different purpose. So if you're just playing at home and playing with a stereo, you should get one of these. Let's start by going through some of them. The Black Star amp, which is only 3 watts, has some basic controls like gain, volume, a basic EQ, and delay. I played one of these at a guitar store recently and I was actually surprised how loud it was and the fact that the tone was pretty decent on such a small amp. It's not a bad entry point and it's pretty cheap. I'll list the prices on the screen here. The next choice is the Pigno 7 100. Now there's a lot of harmonica players that swear by this amp. Like they love it. Now I don't own it myself but it sounds pretty good. I've played it at a store before and it's all right. It's five watts in comparison to the uh, Black Star Fly that's only three watts. This is five watts. And it only has like one setting. Essentially, it's on and then you have a volume knob, which makes it simple, but you don't have a lot of control over your tone. But it sounds pretty decent. It's a little bit distorted, maybe a little too distorted for me, but that's up for you to decide. My choice, though, that I've been talking about for a while on this channel is the Boss Katana Mini and that's what I'm playing with right now. I really love this amp. It just has a lot of bite to it for something so small. And you get more options to shape the tone because you get a full three band EQ and some effects. Like there's a lot here that I think you're gonna like. And it's kind of middle of the range of these at around $100. So I highly recommend the Boss Katana Mini for a nice portable amp with batteries that will last for months and like a pretty killer tone. I have one small tip I want to mention before we go on and talk about bigger amps. If you are playing at home, make sure that you have a decent stereo or a Bluetooth speaker to play with. So one benefit of playing Amplified is enjoying the higher volume level you get out of this. So just make sure that your backing music can keep up. Otherwise, getting all of this gear is not really gonna feel like that much of an upgrade. So you're definitely gonna wanna get like a good speaker or a good stereo to make this worth it. For players that want to play on stage as well as home, you're going to need something a little bit larger, at least with different options. Now, when buying amps, there is a big debate. Do you get a tube amp, which is like an analog amp that runs off of these vacuum tubes or valves, or a solid state amp, which is digital? Now... I used to be a tube elitist when I was a guitar player primarily, but I'm not sure it really matters these days. Honestly, solid state amps have come a long way since they first came out. The differences are like this. Tube amps are pretty expensive usually, and 
to get that warm analog crunch that they're known for that you get by overdriving these tubes, you need to crank these amps up really loud. Like, almost too loud to the point that they're often untenable if you live in an apartment as an example. Now they give you a little bit of this like analog magic that you just don't get on the solid state amps, but it comes at a little bit of a cost in flexibility as far as volume levels, but a good tube amp is very satisfying and not a bad pick. Now solid state amps are digital, but they can still sound pretty decent. A little later in this video, I'm going to be doing some very quick demos of some modeling amp software so you can get an idea of what different amps sound like and you'll hear it's like not too bad. And this Katana Mini that I'm running. Ultimately in 2022, it really doesn't matter which of these two amps types that you pick, though the tube crowd is very vocal and passionate about their tube amps. Now I personally have a Ronnie Shellis signature stage five amp that has a built-in output to a PA. So you never need to worry about this amp being loud enough. It's not as big as some other tube amps like this and it doesn't really matter because you can just plug right into the soundboard if you're going to perform. Now this amp can be really clean and really dirty. It doesn't have a lot of ways to like manipulate the sound, but it's small, it's ridiculously loud, and it's at a good price, at least relative to all of your other options. I think it's a great choice for most harmonica players and I just can't recommend it enough. This is the Stage 5 amp, check it out. <laughs> Outside of these stage five amps, you need to experiment with different guitar amps. Now, a guitar has a bit of a different uh, frequency range than the harmonica, so your results are gonna be a little bit varied. Now, there are different types of these amps, and I don't wanna list particular models, but let me just show you some examples using this modeling software. So you can play something like a Fender Bass Man. <laughs> You might want to check out a uh, Blues Junior. There's also a Reverb Deluxe. Or maybe something more modern like an Orange amp. So besides that stage five amp, there is no one size fits all choice here. The way to really figure this out is to not go by my simulated demos, but to get your microphone and go to a guitar store and start plugging into amps and see which ones you like. Ultimately, your ear is going to be a better decider than me just telling you what to buy. So just plug into a bunch of amps and see what you like. Try them at different gain levels and also try messing with the EQ settings. As a general rule of thumb, Harmonica wants to be really boosted as far as the bass goes and cut a little bit in the treble in the mids. If you do go to a guitar store and you're trying some amps out, I want to suggest that you bring the actual microphone that you're going to be playing with because the choice of amp really depends on the interplay between the microphone and the amp. There are some combos of mics and amps that I really don't like and I can't tell you why they don't work. So you want to make sure that you're choosing the mic that you're actually going to use. As far as microphones, I'm going to talk about them more in the next video in this series. So when it's out, I will link it up here. And that is all for this video. I'll see you next time. Peace.